Hi friends. One of the challenges of preaching is choosing a direction or a focus from the biblical text. There are always multiple ways of approaching, understanding, and applying the text to our faith and life. In addition to multiple themes, there are also always a lot of interesting things about the text or the context itself. Maybe it's grammar, maybe it's a figure of speech or a reference to another part of the scriptures, or maybe it's what was happening in the world at the time or what was going on in the life of the author. The temptation for preachers, especially early on, is to cram as much of that interesting stuff into a sermon as possible. Thankfully, for preachers and congregations, most of us learn pretty quickly to save some of that good stuff for some other good sermons. Today I want to pick up a major theme from last Sunday's scripture reading from the Gospel of John, which I alluded to but did not go into detail in the interest of time, attention, and focus. John 12, 20-24 says, now among those who went up to worship at the festival, that is the Passover, were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The arrival of the Greeks, or Gentiles, or non-Jews, prompts Jesus to declare that his hour had come. In John's Gospel, the hour is shorthand for the completion of Jesus' work of salvation, including his suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension. The gathering of the Gentiles is a sign that Jesus' work of salvation was coming to completion. And Jesus' interpretation of that sign came from his knowledge and understanding of the Old Testament. For example, Isaiah 56 describes a scene in which Jews from the diaspora, along with foreigners, Gentiles, and eunuchs will be gathered into Jerusalem and reconciled with God. Isaiah 56, 7 says, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Jesus fulfills God's promise from Isaiah, gathering all peoples, not to the temple, the holy mountain, but to himself, the Son of God. The gathering of the Gentiles to Jesus before his death and resurrection also points to the mission of the church after his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. The point is that Jesus' hour, his work of salvation, isn't complete until everyone is included. And that inclusion is not based on a person's knowledge of creeds or practice of prayer or adherence to rules. It's based on a desire for Jesus, to be near him, to learn from him, to be loved, and to love. Jesus is still working to gather the world to himself and he's using us to do it. Let's make sure that our words and attitudes and actions draw people close to Christ rather than push them away. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again next week.